It's my DVD review of Ring of Honor Southern Navigation, their uh, debut show in Manassas, Virginia. Opening matchup was Chris Hero versus Pele Primo. Um, pretty much a decent opener. Um, pretty much Chris Hero squashing them a lot of the match. Pele getting in some offense. Um, Larry Sweeney doing a lot of great uh, managerial stuff outside the ring. You know, pretty fun little opener. The crowd was into it. Um, that's one thing i got to give this uh, crowd. This was Ring of Honor in a new territory, an area that they've never went to before. And pretty much seemed like a lot of the fans already knew the product. It wasn't like the Orlando shows where you can kind of tell that, you know, half of the crowd, you know, didn't know the product too much going into it. But definitely, you know, it sounded like, you know, they have a pretty good following down here in Virginia, which is good. Uh, unfortunately, I wish they would come a little closer than Manassas, though, because it's kind of almost close to the outskirts of D.C. It's technically in Virginia, but you could say it's pretty much almost D.C. Um, but Chris Hero picks up the victory after hitting a stiff big boot in a two-star match. Then the next matchup is Rex Titus and Rex Sterling versus Mitch Franklin and Sean Denny. Uh, pretty much a match put together to showcase two local talents. Um, it was a decent match, um, you know, pretty much just somewhat a filler match to uh, put uh, Rex Titus in some type of match. Um, he did pretty good in here. Um, the one thing i got to give him... Um, He's not that good of a wrestler, but he has a pretty good gimmick with this whole sexy, sexiest man alive. And, you know, his promo skills are pretty good. He's kind of like Santino Morella. He's kind of like a good entertainer, but a terrible wrestler. He's, he's not as bad as Santino, but he's pretty damn close. So it was a decent match. You saw Mitch Franklin do some decent stuff in here. And, you know, just an okay match at best, one star. Uh, then up next was um, eight. They did the showed the Age of the Fall segment where they imply that Jimmy Jacobs killed, or at least um, the killing of the character of Lacey, a video that I think everyone has seen by now. And um, then the next matchup was a four-corner survival match, non-title, um, between um, Damian Wayne versus Vern Albright versus Flato Castanoli versus Nigel McGinnis. And this was a good four-corner survival match, not a great one. It was pretty good, somewhat of a typical one. Um, you saw Brent Albright and Damian Wayne work very well with each other. I've seen Damian Wayne a few times, not that much to really say if he was good, but he really worked very well in this match, especially with Brent Albright. That's probably due to the fact of Brent Albright and Damian Wayne both working the NWA territories, and they probably have worked each other in the past, or just recently they might have worked each other. So, you know, they worked very well. A lot of good mat work at the beginning. Um, Claudio and Nigel did some good stuff. It was just a fun um, four-corner survival match. Everyone got in their maneuvers. Um, the way the match ends is Brent Albright keeps hitting repeated knee strikes to the head of Damian Wayne. The referee stops the match in a two- and three-four star match. Then up next was a um, Austin Aries versus Eric Stevens. And a lot of people would expect this to be a great match. Well, for storyline purposes, it hurt the match, but because uh, the way they played it off is that, you know, what Jimmy Jacobs did to Lacey and killing her off or whatever they implied Jimmy Jacobs did, and um, pretty much that's overcome um, Austin Aries and has, didn't care about his match this night, so he comes out here first, he's in street clothes, calls out Jimmy Jacobs, then um, Eric Stevens comes out here and you see them start their match. Wasn't as bad as I thought it would be since, you know, he was in his street gear. Uh, but it was, you know, a decent match. You know, a match between these two, if it was given more time and Austin Aries was actually wearing his wrestling gear other than his street gear, it probably wouldn't have been better, um, especially as we saw earlier this year. I think it was either Transform or Proven Ground, which they did have an incredible match there. Um, but, you know, this was pretty decent. Um, Austin Aries picks up the victory after using Jimmy Jacobs' own finishing maneuver, the end time to Eric Stevens to send a message to Jimmy Jacobs. Then after this, you hear an excellent promo from um, Austin Aries against Jimmy Jacobs. Very good. Um, that match, two and one four stars. Then the next matchup is Necro Butcher versus Jack Evans in a no DQ match. Saw some pretty good stuff in here. A lot of stiff chair shots, stiff punches. Jack Evans getting his aerial stuff. Um, not as good as their previous no DQ match. I think they had at Final Battle, which was very good. Um, this was pretty much just a decent no DQ match. You're expecting a little more from it, but they did do some decent stuff in here. Um, basically, the same type of finish that they had before. 
Necro Butcher uses the sidewalk slam on two back-to-back -back chairs to Jack Evans, picks up the victory, and um, a two-in-one four-star match. Then the next matchup is um, Jimmy Jacobs versus Jay Briscoe. Very good brawl, a lot of good brawling outside the outside the ring. Pretty good stuff here. This match, and especially the last two matches, really helped this show out because for that, you kind of can tell, at least by my ratings, that it was pretty weak undercard for this show. But this match was pretty good. Um, like you would expect in a um, southern territory and them coming to Virginia, Jay Briscoe was highly over, um, probably with his gimmick being a redneck. And plus, you know, coming out to Leonard Skinner doesn't probably hurt him in Virginia. So definitely was highly over with the crowd. Um, you know, pretty good stuff between him and Jimmy Jacobs. Um, a lot of good brawling. Um, pretty decent. Um, I thought I was expecting it to be a little more, expecting, you know, a little blood in it, but it was pretty decent overall, like I said. Um, Jimmy Jacobs picks up the victory after hitting the end time through a, um, he, there, was two, there was two tables placed ne next to each other with a, not a table, a chair, two tables placed uh, beside each other and a chair on top of it. He um, basically does DDT into the end time and Jay Briscoe ends up tapping out. Pretty good match, um, good brawling and stuff between these between the uh, two and a three-star match. Then up next was the match of the night, and this match and the next match made this show at least overall a good show. Um, this was Tyler Black versus Brian Danielson. A lot of good, excellent stuff between these two in this match. A lot of good mat work, a lot of good um, submission maneuvers, a lot of good uh, counters, um, reversals. Just a lot of great stuff between these two. They really worked great with each other like you would expect. Um, very good stuff. Pretty much that's the only way I can really explain this match. But saw a lot of good stuff in here. Danielson um, wins after um, after Tyler Black taps out of a half Boston Crab in a 4-1 four and one four star match. Great match. Then the main event was a six-man tag team match pitting... Team Noah, uh, Takeshi Morishima, Go Shiozaki, and Namichi Marafuji versus the Noah Morris Corps of Roger Strong, Rocky Romero, and Davey Richards. Fun main event. A lot of great stuff between these, between everyone in this match. Everyone worked well with each other. Really was exciting. Uh, before this match started, I was really wanting to see Rocky Romero and Morishima against each other. You saw that. That was pretty enjoyable. Um, you saw a lot of great stuff in here. Everyone worked great like you would expect they would. You know, just a good main event to end the show. Um, great tag team match at the main event. A lot of good stuff. Um, no more score using a lot of good heel tactics behind the referee's back. You know, the um, pro wrestling Noah team doing a lot of good stuff. Um, Marafuji picks up the victory after hitting the Sharanui slice bread, whichever one you want to call it, to Rocky Romero in a four-star match. Overall, I would give this show a 7.75. You had two excellent... Um, co-main events with Brian Danielson versus Tyler Black, and then the No Remorse Corps versus Team Noah, six-man tag. And overall, you know, the rest of the show was pretty decent overall, but you had a, kind of a weak undercard, which probably hurt this show from getting up into the range of an eight. But it was a decent overall show. If you're a fan of Brian Danielson and Tyler Black, I would recommend you to get this show because that match was excellent. And if you're a fan of, you know, the pro wrestling Noah um, team or whoever, whoever in that match, Morishima, Goshiazaki, or Marafuji, I would recommend it. But it, unless you're a huge fan of them, it, this is one show that you kind of could probably pass on because the undercard kind of does hurt this show a lot, you know. But the last two matches really, you know, elevated this show from probably the range before that. It probably would have been, you know, at best a six, a six. But those two matches really elevated this show very good. So. That's my review of Ring of Honor Southern Navigation. I peace.